Hello and welcome back to part two of our SHA video. Now, our last time we saw each other, these two units have been synchronized together in a Synology high availability environment. And I won't lie, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. So much so, you may notice I've got a different shirt on, for God's sake. It's been another day. It actually took uh, just over a day to get these two devices synchronized together. So not dissimilar to that of a rate configuration. But I do think the more data you've got on one that you're trying to pair with another, it definitely takes longer. Now, in this part of this series of videos, what I'm going to show you is what happens when you read and write to that device. So what I'm going to do is move over to the screen in a bit, and I'm going to show you the device on the environment, the completed SHA, and moreover, I'm going to show you what happens to both devices when you read and write to them. So let's move over to the screen. Here we are on the desktop environment uh, of my PC here. And as you can see, as mentioned in the other video, once we synchronize these two together, the identities of box one, known as admin test one, and box two, known as admin test two, stopped existing. And if you try to search your network environment, all that came up was admin test three. You could ignore that unit at the bottom. That's nothing to do with this test. Um, now, these two devices from our previous video, once again, if you don't believe me, there's the IPs on screen. There's IP of each of those individual admin tests and the one at the top there. It has managed to change both those devices to become one phantom device that involves the two. And what we're going to do is I'm going to now transfer a crap load of files to this device to see what happens to their individual performance. Now, if I try to extend this as much as I can... And what we'll do is we'll see and go through these options as we read and write data. So straight away, it's all the files that are on that primary NAS that we've now transferred into a primary environment, uh, a SHA environment, are all still here. So what we'll do is we're going to use this folder here, test folder. And once again, this is on the Phantom NAS, not on the original one. And what I'm going to do is just go straight into video records. These are all screen records from different videos. And I'm just going to grab all of those. Don't worry, you don't have to wait for all of them to be done. And this is about 4 gigs. So not a huge amount of data, but just to show. So we're going to copy these over to the NAS and see what happens to our SHA environment. So boom, now we're going to start transferring. So let's have a look at the performance of both of these boxes as we go. We've got up here the queue of all of these things being sent and straight away the CPU utilization of the first box has leapt up. The second box has gradually gone up and again as the graphic indicates that is because data is being sent from one to the other. In other videos um, in case you are wondering and you don't want to hold out for it in future in a follow-up video to this I am going to interrupt a write operation from this device just to see what happens but right now those files are still being sent and the utilization on that first box has gone up. The more keen of you may have noticed at the beginning there that when the devices were um, somewhat idle and dormant, the CPU utilization on what is considered the primary device in this setup was higher. And I think that's because in a, a Synology high availability environment, nothing is really idle anymore because the two devices are still pinging a connection to one another via that heartbeat connection and moreover the primary device always has to be ready to synchronize at any given time so it's a kind of right ready state that will continue to get that cpu always slightly higher but once again as you can see cpu utilization on the primary device the one that we originally used for the setup is definitely higher. We're seeing that number getting high all the time, whereas the second device doesn't seem to be too taxed. Now, once again, we're still going to wait until this completion is done, but it, I think it's definitely worth highlighting there the fact that the second unit is going to be getting less of a hammering. And when it comes to when we do the um, critical event test, I am going to disconnect the original NAS, just to see what the second NAS does. And the hope is that when I do that, this screen does not change. So we're going to do two kinds of critical event after this video. We're going to be one critical event when the devices are idle, so no file transmission, and then we're going to do another test where I'm going to be sending files to admin test 3 or SHA environment NAS to see what happens to these devices when we have a write action happening straight away. But as you can see, that's been done now, and the CPU utilization has creeped back down, but it's still there in the teens, which isn't great. But that's it for the test there of the read-write test, and if you want, 
We can access these files and see what happens when we copy them back. So how about if we copy a bunch of these files? And what we'll do is we'll copy them all and I'll down I won't download all of them. It seems a bit unnecessary to download all. But what I'll do is I'll download the biggest ones, shall we? Let's let's get those to the biggest files. And what I'll do is I'll download these top three. And we'll see what happens to the device during this read operation. So we'll download them all. And once again, what will happen now is we're downloading again from this SHA cluster. But what's quite interesting here is the fact that the CPU utilization hasn't crept up as fast as it has previously. It has gone up, as you can see there, but it hasn't gone bananas. And I think a lot of that is because not only is there less action by the CPU in a read operation than there is in a write, but moreover, we, I'd like to know if we are downloading from both boxes simultaneously. Because look at the CPU there on the second NAS. It's actually gone down. So are we just not accessing the data on the second NAS at all and just from the primary? And then in the background, is that uh, now synchronizing across the other one? Because maybe if we delete a file, does a deletion have to happen? Oh, ignore that there. Just saying because it knows we've got more than one file. If we delete from the original NAS, what will happen then? I'm saying the original NAS, of course it isn't the original NAS anymore. There is no original NAS as far as you, the end user, should be aware. But now those downloads have been completed, we're gonna do the final test, which is going to be the mass deletion, where we are now going to delete all of those files from the NAS. So we're gonna delete them all and see what happens. And presumably they've gone into the recycle bin so let's do a proper full deletion from that bin. And again, fairly small. We've definitely seen a spike there on the Admin Test 2 device, but not too much. And again, that hasn't really affected performance too much. But again, this has been the test of read-write actions on a Synology high availability environment. Next, I will be doing a flat idle critical event on these two devices. So do check that out in the next video. Look at that. The percentage has gone up while the second device is synchronizing that action. By the way, thank you so much for watching. Buy your NAS from Span. Read about NAS on NASCompares.com. Watch this channel and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.